nothing. I, I'd love it if we could just if we could just worship. So if we could stand to worship, um, I'll get some words up for.
much, Dave. Um, just a few sort of things before I actually start. Um, what I'm trying to what I'm trying to sort of say today is just like a, just a few a few thank yous. Dave is such a legend. I don't even want to go into all the amazing things he's done. This ministry is going to be so significant. It has been so significant. It will continue to be. And, and it's such an honour, Dave, to actually you know stand on here and talk. You know, and so thank you. Um, just give Dave a round of applause. Golf round of applause. And uh, and Tommy, um, is Tommy in? Hey, dude. And just again, a, a thank you for your wisdom this morning. It was amazing. I I was challenged and learned so much just in the however long you were on, you know. And I'm really excited to um, to see, you know. I'm just excited to catch up with you at some point, and you know. So thank you for coming down. That's great, and thank you to all the bands that have played and stuff. Cool, right? So um, now I'm really, really aware that I feel uh, like I'm sort of, you know, like that that band that goes after that band that's amazing, and you sort of get on stage and you're like, oh no, you know what I mean? Because Tommy was so good this morning, and. And I, you know, <laughs> and I sort of feel completely inadequate, you know, but it's all good, it's all good. Um, I'm also, I'm going to apologise in advance, I have, a, I have a PowerPoint because I'm a teacher. <laughs> well, I'm not a teacher anymore, but I used to be a teacher and I still have the teacher mentality, so feel free to ignore the PowerPoint if you wish. My PowerPoint was merely to help me put together what I was trying to say. Um, and... and what I'm, what I'm talking about today, and hopefully some of it will actually stay on the screen, which would be great, is um, is this idea of excellence, and and it's it's part of a word, uh, a message I heard a while ago, and I've kind of taken this sort of seed of an idea which was planted in me, and at the time I thought, there's so many people, me included, who who really need to hear, really need to hear this message, and and um, and and so I've sort of taken this idea, and I've sort of really sort of try to pull apart the little the little bits of, of, of what it means um, to be excellent. Uh, and essentially, I know how, how so many of you guys in here, in fact, everybody in here is excellent at what they do. And, um, and, and I am really not qualified to speak on this, but it's what I really, really felt the Lord was saying, the Lord was sort of put on my heart to talk about. And so, yeah, <laughs> here we go. Um, so I was, I, was sort of, I was sort of thinking about, well, what does the word excellent mean? What does excellence mean as a word? What does it mean to, to, to us as people? What does it look like? And that's what I'm going to sort of have a look at. And I'd just like you to spend five seconds, less than that, thinking about a time in your life where you have not been excellent. Okay? Just a time where you've not been excellent. Whatever that may be, whatever that may look like, I'm sure you've all got... Um, you've all got sort of ideas of what that might be. I thought rather than sort of getting somebody up and saying, tell us about when you were rubbish, I thought I'd just actually just sort of put myself on the spot and tell you about a time when I was not excellent. Um, and so I used to play um, bass uh, in a metal band from Stoke, um, not a Christian metal band or anything like that, just an ordinary run of mill metal band. Um, we used to gig quite a lot. And I was brought into the band because their bass player had left. They knew me and they said, here, try this song out. And it was quite easy and I played it and I enjoyed it. And they said, okay, cool, right, do you want to be our new bass player? And I went, all right, yeah, cool, fair enough. And I, so I started learning all their stuff and, you know, getting to grips. I think I had like a month before the next gig. And so I had to basically learn like three albums worth of stuff. And I was sort of really cramming it. And one of their big songs was quite fast. And I'm not very good, as uh, some of you will probably know, uh, really not technically brilliant uh, at my instrument. And I really couldn't play it. I, I couldn't do it. Uh, they sent me the tabs, everything else. I could have, you know, if I had sat down, I probably could have, you know, really practiced and really been amazing at it. And I decided not to. And I'd love to see, I'm sort of looking at the musicians now to see if this rings true with any of them. So I pretended that I learned how to play it and actually played something much, much simpler and just thought, it's fine. And the great thing is, is when you're in a metal band, if it's loud enough, nobody knows when you play wrong notes. 
you know, so it was, I was like, great, I'm only kidding, but you know. But I, but I, but I, I got away with it, you know, I managed to play this much simplified version of this riff, and, and I got away with it. Uh, and we ended up um, going to record uh, an album, and we ended up doing a new version of this same song. I'm sure you can see where this is going, but it came to the point where we were like, right, drums are laid down, okay, we're going to do a bass. And they all stood in the uh, control room while I failed miserably at playing this riff. Absolutely failed miserably to the point where they stopped and went, do you, do you know how to, how to play this song? And I went, yeah, it's like this, isn't it? And they went, no. And I was like, okay. And um, the drummer had to come and play the riff instead of me. And it was really, really really, really embarrassing, you know? And I, and I sort of started, th it, was, it was, you know, we got over it in the end, and then I went back to playing the simple riff again in the gigs. Uh, and I just didn't play on that track on the album, so, you know, my credit probably is incorrect, but anyway, I'm taking it. Uh, but, but it sort of, it made me think, well, why didn't I sit and learn it? Because I, I probably could have done, you know? If, uh, I, I probably had the time, and it was just a bit of effort, and I, but I just didn't do it. You know, and I thought, it was such a shame in the end. But anyway, I'm not in that band now, so it don't matter. <laughs> what am I going to say? Um, but, but, now, but I'd like you to think about a time now when you might have been excellent. And I would wager that people in here would know or would be able to say more about the times when they have not been excellent than excellent. Um, it, 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 you know, it's... We're very critical of ourselves and we're very eager to sort of go, oh, yeah, I did that, that was rubbish. But... Try and think about a time when you've been really excellent. Whether it's something you did, something you made, something you achieved, something you, uh, maybe a particular way you acted, maybe something that nobody knows about, and so, you know, you're sort of, you know, you're harboring that as, a, you know, whatever it may be. I think as Christians, we're, we are rightly told um, that our intentions are the most important thing. You know, God sees our hearts, he forgives us of our shortcomings. That's completely true. Um, but but this is what I want to sort of discuss today. Is I think I think we're selling ourselves short. I really think we're selling ourselves short. I think further to this, you know, just being all right and just getting by and having good intentions. I I think we are selling ourselves as Christians short. I think we are selling God short because I think that we as brothers and sisters in Christ, are called to be people of excellence. Yeah. We're called to be people of excellence. And, and I think for too long, me definitely, you know, talking to me here mainly, we've, we've been happy with, with, you know, sort of, yeah, it's all right, it's good, it's, it's okay, you know. And actually, we're called to be so much more than that. Um, I've got uh, a, a, a transcript of a, a speech here, um, which is um, not, not Martin Luther King's most famous speech, but probably my favourite. And it says, I'm going to have to read it off here now. It says, what I'm saying to you this morning, my friends, um, and he was actually speaking to a group of um, high school kids at the time. He says, even if it falls your lot to be a street sweeper, go out and sweep streets like Michelangelo painted pictures. Sweep streets like Handel and Beethoven composed music. Sweep streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Sweep streets so well that all of the hosts of heaven and earth will have to pause and say, here lived a great street sweeper who swept his job well. If you can't be a pine on the top of a hill, be a scrub in the valley, or be the best little scrub on the side of the rill. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. It isn't by the size that you win or fail. Be the best at whatever you are. Oh, that's amazing. Um, but the, the, I think it contains a really, really powerful message. What was really interesting was when he said that, he had a lot of criticism um, from, from sort of his opponents. Because there were a lot of people opposed to Martin Luther King, obviously. And a lot of people were saying, well, 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 well this highlights the viewpoint. Um, obviously, the, the, the gist of it was talking um, about African Americans. And, and he was sort of saying... Well, this sort of highlights the viewpoint that they should sort of just accept their lot in life and conform to society and not dream to get out of the situation. You know, just shut up and put up with their circumstance. But actually, I think the viewpoint is, is, is a bit 
well, it's completely wrong. Um, and I believe what Martin Luther King was trying to say is that some of us, some of us feel, feel called to something higher than where we are right now. Some of us feel we are destined for more, that we have unfulfilled potential, that we have unfulfilled dreams. And, and, and I think he was trying to say, well, what he was trying to say was, whatever your circumstance, you know, wherever you find yourself, whatever rubbish job that you have that you wish you didn't, you know, but you have to have because you're paying the bills or whatever, the, the way you rise above it is to be the best you can be, and not to be content with average. Um, and when it's your time, you will be pulled out of what you're in because you are the best at what you do. Um, and, and I think that's really, really really powerful. I think if we look at, um, if, if we look at this, this de definition here, I'm sorry this is so teachery, but anyway, you know, let's break it down. Um, excellence is defined as the quality of being outstanding or extremely good. Uh, if I sort of just split that up, you know, a quality, it's, it's a characteristic, it's an attribute. That, that can be acquired. It's not something, you know, I'm just not good at this or I'm just not excellent at that. It's something that you can acquire. It's something that you can, you can take for yourself. I think the next word is outstanding. I love this. Outstanding, it means, it doesn't just mean a sort of a, you know, nine out of ten or whatever. It means set apart from the crowd. You are outstanding. You are different to them. You're so good, you're different. And, and extremely good. Um, I just quite liked this one. It was just extremely good, just good to the extreme, you know? Just mentally good, unfeasibly good. And, and I think we often use the word excellent really, really flippantly. But in reality, it means that right now, in this current moment, and that's quite important later on, but in, in this current moment, there's nothing you can do to, be, to, 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 to get any better than what you've done. And at this point, I just really, really love to encourage you. If you've ever been told in your work or in, in, your, um, in your band, if you've played a show or whatever, and you've been told that you're excellent, don't just simply pass that off. Don't simply pass that off. Because we have an amazing culture. Who, who knows this? In, in Britain, you know, we have this amazing culture of when somebody compliments us, we immediately deflect it away. And David was in the same room as when um, somebody mentioned this to me. He was talking about um, he was talking about women deflecting compliments. You know, you see a friend uh, wearing a lovely dress or whatever. I'm so sorry, I'm using women here, but anyway, you know, and, and you know, oh, it looks lovely, and it's instantly a quid Primark. You know, and it's not, it, it, it's not, oh, thank you, you know, and, and, and it's, it's not, I've just used, <laughs> there's a terrible example there, but, but you, get, you get what I mean, we've, we, in this culture, we don't know how to accept, humbly accept compliments, and I think it's really, really important that we do, because we're being honoured, we're being honoured by somebody, and I think, and, and I think it's, 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 it's good for ourselves if we, as I said, humbly, but humbly accept compliments, you know, and maybe further than that, we don't deflect it away, we don't deflect the compliment back, but actually we deflect it and we sort of highlight God in all of it, you know? If you've been excellent, why have you been excellent? Because of God or whatever, you know? I, I think it's a great way, it's a great way to, um, you, you know, to highlight God in that. Um, okay, so why should we be excellent? Um, because goodness knows I've spent 26 years of my life generally not being excellent. You know, it's, it's, it's much easier to not be excellent than anything. But why should we be excellent? Why should we, why should we strive for excellence? Um, here's a few reasons that I just put off. There's, there's, there's about a hundred. Um, here's the first one. It's, it's a biblical principle. And realistically, this should probably be the only one that matters. But it's, you know... But there's loads of them. But here's the first one. Biblical principles. Whatever you do, this is Colossians chapter 3. Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. Since you know you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. 
okay? And that's not saying that we should be doing things well because we will get a reward. We should be doing them to honor God, you know? Um, but if it's any more clearly, the, you know, the Bible tells us that we should be, that we should be excellent. Um, yeah. Okay, next one. Okay, to, so to use the, the gifts that you've been given, um, use the talents that, that have been given to you. You know, we all know what it's like um, to give a gift to somebody, for them to act grateful, but then for you to know that they're not using it. So maybe you've been around to somebody's house and you bought them a, a bread maker or something, and they're like, oh, great, we'll use this all the time, and they never do. And you sort of, you, you know, you sort of, oh, I spent money on that, and they're not really using it. You know, well, one amazing example was for Christmas. Um, for Christmas, my cousin bought me um, a massive, massive box set of Bear Grylls. Now, anybody who, who, who really knows me closely will, will know that I don't really like Bear Grylls. You know, he's a guy, he's a guy, he's lovely, you know, strong ambassador for Christ and all that, great, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just can't stand his programmes. It's just something about me, I just don't like them. And I like to go on at length about how I don't like his programmes. Not my cup of tea. So you can imagine on Christmas Day I've opened this present and I've done that amazing thing where you go, Great, thanks. And then sort of walked away. And I think this tells us two things. Number one, I'm really, really stingy and haven't grasped the whole Christmas concept of it's the thought that counts, but anyway, never mind. But number two, what it highlighted to me was, was actually how much maybe my cousin and I don't spend a lot of time together. Um, you, you know, he was just unaware that it's just not my, not my thing, you know? I was very, very appreciative of the time, but... But, but he, you know, he it just sort of highlighted, well, maybe we're not quite as close as I thought. And some of you may think when, you know, when God's given you talents, like, for example, um, musical ability or um, being able to relate to people and have good conversations with people or um, whatever it may be, whatever God-given gift you've been given. And you might be in a position where you're thinking, why am I here? Because I'm not using this gift. Or, the other way around, why have I got this gift? Because I'm never going to use it. Yeah. You know? And, and, and actually, here's the thing, is you may wonder why God has given you certain gifts and traits, but just like how my cousin and I clearly don't know each other as well, God knows you better than you know yourself. He knows how many hairs are on your head. He sketched out your fingerprint. He knows you inside and out. He knows what you're going to be like in a few years. He knows what road you're going to go down. And he knows what gifts and talents you're going to need to fulfill his kingdom. And, and I think that's really, really important is that everything that you've been given has been given for a purpose. And I think, and I think that's really, really important. And sort of further to that, what better way to worship God than by just using the gifts that you've given to the best of your ability. In the exact same way, what would be lovely is for the person who got the bread maker would be when they come round for dinner, oh, we've got some bread and I made it freshly. Oh, lovely, you know, ha, 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 very nice. But that would be lovely. You would feel, oh, they're using my gifts and, you, and, and, and that, would be, that would be such a lovely feeling. What a better, what, there is no better way to worship God than, than to use your gifts for him and use them well as an act of worship. Um, we are a, fl a reflection of Christ and we all know the famous saying, uh, well, I do anyway, that the worst thing about Christianity is the Christians. Um, for better or worse, Christianity is judged by the outside world looking at Christians and the enemy has, has a real thing about trying to sort of pick Christians apart and, you know, to, to secular society we have reputations, you know? There's plenty of stereotypes and reputations, not just about Christians, but, um, um, but, but about other religions and other, you know, about men and women and all sorts, you know? And, and so I wonder if you'd imagine a job interview situation, if a, a, a firm, um, a, if a, a, a boss in a firm sits, sits a guy down and he looks at his CV and he knows he's a Christian, what is he instantly gonna think? What is he instantly going to think? Is he going to think, oh, well, this guy is going to be trustworthy? He might talk about church a lot, but he's going to be trustworthy. He's going to be honest. I'd like to think so. I think that's a nice trait. But, but I don't think he would say, 
oh, he's a Christian, that means that everything he does is going to be good. Everything he does is going to be of an excellent standard. I'm going to hire this guy because he's going to be the top guy or girl. Um, you, you know, and, 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 and I think that's a shame. Then. And I, I think that's a shame, but I think that we can have that reputation. I think that's something that we can have. But this is the most important thing I want to talk about that I want to get, eventually get on to. Is I think one of the most important reasons why we should be excellent is because we can change the world by being excellent. I'd suggest to all of us in this room, to a different degree of enthusiasm or vigour, uh, want to see the world change, you know, whether we want to see changes in society, education, politics, um, you know, we all want to see some kind of change. If you don't agree with me, then you probably think the world is perfect. Um, but how do we change the world? Do we need to change the world? Well, that's a completely different question. But I personally think, you know, to make our world and our society and our community a better place, we've... We've, we've got to not just have good intentions and we've got to not just sit in buildings and pray, although prayer is immensely important, but we've got to put a lot of these things together, prayer plus action. And, and, and on top of that, we need to be a people who are excellent at what we do because once we're excellent at what we do, we will be put into positions of influence. Proverbs twenty two twenty nine. Do you see someone skilled in their work? They will serve before kings. Another way of saying it is, I think, is people of excellence will stand before kings. You will get an audience with kings. Nehemiah 1.11 uh, says, Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favour in the presence of this man. I was cupbearer to the king. So he's saying, you know, look, God, I've got this great position you know, I, I'm in with the right people. Give me favour with this man. Okay? And a cupbearer, for those of you who, who don't know, um, is not somebody who brings the wine out per se. He's an, he, a cupbearer was an officer of high rank in royal courts. I've just, um, I took this off the internet. It says, uh, a, a officer of high rank whose duty it was to serve drinks at the royal table. On account of the constant fear of plots, a person must be regarded as thoroughly trustworthy to hold this position. He must guard against poisoning the king's cup, which, and he was sometimes required to swallow some of the wine before serving it. His confidential relations with the king often gave him a position of great influence. The position of cupbearer is greatly valued and given to only a select few throughout history. Qualifications for the job were not held lightly, but held of high esteem, valued for their modesty, industriousness, and courage. A cupbearer wasn't a bartender or a servant, but a trusted counsellor. And I think going back, um, going back to Martin Luther King, this is what he was alluding to. If you find yourself in a job you don't like, or playing gigs that you feel are too small for you, you know, you want to reach more people. The worst thing you can do is be average, because you won't move. But by being the very best you can be, you will be pulled from that place in order to go on to higher places. Uh, I read somewhere, shelf stackers, if you are excellent at stacking shelves, you'll be asked to coordinate entire teams of shelf stackers. And you then won't stack shelves. Bands, I then took this and put it with bands. If you can put on an amazing show in front of 20 people, you'll be asked to play in front of 200. How many musicians agree that the harder shows to play are the ones with smaller audiences? You know, if you can be trusted with little, you'll be trusted with more. And I think we should be using this to our advantage. You know, if you think that society is going down the drain and biblical principles are not being reflected in what children are taught in school, then don't criticise teachers, but become a teacher, hone your craft, and eventually you'll be asked for input on school curriculums. If you feel there's too many songs with appropriate messages in charts, I'd say don't criticise Miley Cyrus. Well, no, do criticise Miley Cyrus. But, but become a musician, hone your craft, and you will play your positive message in front of hundreds of people. And that's, that's what I think it's, it, it's all about. It's about an opportunity that then comes to us when we're excellent. Um, I'm very near the end now, but what does, excellent, what does excellence look like? Um, sorry, you can just skip through this slide if you wouldn't mind. Okay. It's just saying about how excellence isn't just a place that we need to reach, it's a standard that we need to keep pushing, for, pushing forward. 
you know, we are constantly, we need to constantly be rising to the top and irrespective of the standard of others. Now here's, here's, a, here's a great passage, I think. How do we strive to be excellent? And this is taken from Daniel, um, I believe it's uh, just before he gets thrown into the lion's den. It says, now Daniel so distinguished him, himself among the chief ministers and the satraps by his exceptional qualities uh, that the king planned to, to set him over the whole kingdom. At this, the chief ministers uh, and satraps, the other officers, tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. You notice how the enemy is trying to pick at him. The enemy is trying to find holes, trying to find things. And it says they were, they were unable to find, uh, unable to do so. They could not find no corruption in him because he was, and I love this, trustworthy, not corrupt, and not negligent. So if you, just, um, if you just take a look at that, I think that just leads to three points, okay, which is I'm going to wrap up with. Trustworthy, it speaks of relationship. Are we excellent in our relationships? Whether that's with co-workers or, or, um, or bosses or whatever, or for, for musicians, are you excellent at your relationship with your fans, with venues, with management, with promotion, with labels? Because if your relationships aren't excellent with them, then it's, it's, things just aren't going to happen. Um, you know, your relationships as well with your family and friends, the guys who are going to support you all the time. Um, corrupt um, speaks of, it speaks of integrity. Um, so, you know, do, do your, your actual, your attitude, your, your message, your honesty, okay, that's really important. And then the last one, um, it, it speaks of him not being negligent. Um, another translation, um, I, I can't remember the exact wording, but it essentially amounts to, to product, okay? What you are creating, what you are doing. If you are um, good at your job, if you are good as a musician, you know, if you're a musician, um, you know, your music, your, um, your live shows, your artwork, your merchandise has to be fantastic. Um, and, 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 and that's something that we need to look at. An interesting, um, it's just the thing was, uh, I spoke to some guys at a big uh, Christian radio uh, network here in the UK, and they said so many times they get amazing um, CDs of music, but they look at the artwork and it needs throwing away. The CD needs thrown away because of the artwork. And somebody spent thousands of pounds recording this amazing CD, gone to the best recording studio, and they've not spent the couple of hundred quid to get some good quality artwork. And actually the truth is, is if that was in the secular market, that would be thrown away. They wouldn't even entertain it. And I think that we've, we've, we are already have the potential to be excellent, but sometimes I think we just maybe need to, maybe need to step our game up a little bit more. Um, I know I certainly do. Um, and we can see the similarities, as I said, is, 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 is it's, it's areas that the enemy is trying to pick apart. And we need to be really, really vigilant. Uh, and I just think, um, ju just finally, just, just to sort of sum up, I, I, I believe that when we're people of excellence, that God will open doors for us. Yeah. Opportunities for us to progress in our careers or in music into places of higher influence. And with this comes the opportunity for evangelism because you will get to, to, to speak over, you will have influence on big, on more numbers of people. You'll be put into positions of authority. And then to turn that opportunity for evangelism into encounters with God. And, 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 and can I encourage you, because um, I've sort of had this issue where I was thinking, well, God, I'm really not excellent. You know, what do I do? And can I encourage you, just for a place to start, why not just start by worshipping him? Just start by saying, you know what, everything I do in life, my day job, looking after the kids, whatever it may be, school, I'm just going to just, just use it as an act of worship. And I'm going to live my life like it's an act of worship. And because the thing is, is that only, and we've, as the worship band, have certainly found this, is that when it comes to worshiping God, only the best will do, because He is deserving of the best. We have an excellent, extraordinary God who demands the very best of us when we worship Him. He, He, and, and there's sort of no other way of saying it. So if we sort of have that attitude to to our life, then then I, I believe we'll be 
totally, totally blessed. And and then you know we can say, well, if, if I, you know, I certainly know if I approached certain areas of my life with the same passion and commitment to excellence as I approached my worship life, it, I, I, I would be my life would be so much better. You know, I'd have all these amazing opportunities. And, and and I just really, really want to encourage you because the bands in this room and the people in this room are already already incredibly good at what you do. Your ministries are fantastic. And I just want to encourage you, just, just, just keep going. You know, if you don't think you're quite there yet, you don't think you're quite excellent yet, or you don't think, you think you're a little below standard, don't stop. Don't stop doing what you're doing. Just push harder because, because we have got an amazing standard of people and of bands in this room. I, I just want to honour you all because you are all amazing. But if I can just give you one bit of encouragement, it's, it's to just strive to be even more for God because he demands that. And as a result, you'll be blessed, I, I believe. So, um, yeah. Um, with the worship band.